Welcome back. If you suffer from seasonal affective disorder, you're certainly certainly not alone. This is a big issue at this time of the year with the darker days, the colder weather, not getting outside as much. We have Chantel Briscoe joining us on the show today from Nature's Fair. Uh, welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to have you. And I should tell our viewers that this is going to be a new segment that we'll be doing once a month with Chantel uh, relating to important health issues. And at this time of the year, SAD definitely fits that bill. Exactly. So I think a lot of people are aware of the condition and they're aware of some of the symptoms but they're not really sure what distinguishes it from say chronic depression so some of the symptoms that we often see with sad are feeling low consistently um, just tired low mood maybe you're grumpy a lot more we notice that more in the winter right mm -hmm. we're also finding that people are not as excited about things that they usually enjoy maybe they're not getting out there and doing new things as much mm -hmm. so we're noticing that these symptoms usually start um, around September or October, and then they usually clear up in the spring sometime. So the thing about um, SAD or seasonal affective disorder is that it is preventable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we find that um, it is quite prevalent in Canada, as we are above the 35th parallel. They say that um, the rate of SAD is actually about 30% of people experience this. 30%, so every one in three. Year. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. what we can do is get outside more, get more exercise. But the nice thing is, is that there are things that can help us. If we take them consistently and if we are, if we basically approach it in a preventative way, there's a higher chance of us avoiding SAD. Right, so get on it before you start feeling those symptoms coming exactly. over you. Yes. So what are some of the things you can do? I mean, everybody can say, go and get outside and exercise more, but you may or may not make time for that. But there are some other things you can also do. Exactly, right, Susan. So the first thing I would recommend is taking vitamin D. We know that during the winter, and especially living in Canada, that we do not actually make any vitamin D throughout the winter season. Mm -hmm. So Health Canada recommends that an infant takes 400 international units a day, an adult takes about 600 international units, and um, anyone over 70 is going to need to take 800. Okay. So that's your basic daily recommended dose. Is too much vitamin D a bad thing? And it so, is, How yes. much is too much? So Health Canada recommends that the upper limit of your vitamin D for daily consumption is actually 4,000 international units. Okay. Keeping in mind that is for someone who is not deficient, someone just that needs to baseline. Um, so we've had new studies recently that do recommend that you can go above there as long as you're under the care of your doctor, as long as they're, they're testing your blood to make sure that you actually are deficient. Okay. okay. So it's very highly recommended if you start taking it, say in the fall, you can prevent yourself from experiencing these sad symptoms. Okay, so it's not so important to take when we're getting that beautiful sunshine outside, the days are longer, something to think about adding to your, your vitamin supplements come fall. Exactly, okay. yes. So the next thing I would recommend is doing an omega-3 supplement. So omega-3s are so popular these days. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ways to get our omega-3s is from cold water fish. So I know that most Canadians actually don't eat enough fish. Mm -hmm. So using an omega-3 supplement is very helpful. I would recommend taking around 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of fish oil a day. There's also vegetarian options, so you can do a chia seed, flaxseed, plant oils. So there's lots of different options, and you don't have to be constricted just because you don't eat meat. Sure. Okay. And melatonin, I know, is another one. It is, yes. So melatonin, when we are experiencing the longer um, darkness in the day, we're finding that our body is either producing too much melatonin or not enough melatonin. So that can cause us to oversleep or be unable to get to sleep. So using melatonin is a great way to regulate our sleep cycle mm -hmm. without any other sort of intervention. Right, and it's more natural. I mean, you could go to your doctor and get a sleeping pill, but if you don't have to, you can stay natural. You exactly. should, right? Exactly, yeah. I completely agree. Yeah, and melatonin does work. I've used it in the past, it does work. A lot of people out there would say the same, for sure. Exactly, yeah. yes. And so, I mean, using melatonin, we, we want to do a lower dose. You're looking at maybe one milligram to three milligrams a night. Um, 
I was recommended by a doctor that if you do experience odd dreams, it means you're taking too much melatonin and okay. cut it back. Good, good to know. Yes. We have about 30 seconds. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, so the last thing I wanted to speak on is just something called 5-HTP. This is going to help increase your serotonin production in your body. So keep in mind, though, that we can't use this with other antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication, as it may conflict. Okay. But just getting outside, getting more exercise, and doing things that you love are all things that are going to help combat SAD. Okay. What was the last one you talked about? 5-H? 5-HTP. Okay. So it's a type of activated tryptophan, which is an amino acid. Okay. And it just increases serotonin production in okay. the body. And like you said, uh, all of these things are good, but prevention is better than waiting for it to happen and then trying to dig yourself out. Exactly. Stay ahead of the game. Great point. Yeah. All right, Chantel, thank you very much for being here today. Wonderful. Thank you, Susan. Very welcome. If you'd like more information about SAD or any other health-related topics, you can absolutely walk right into Nature's Fair. You can go to naturesfair.com. The phone number also on the screen. We're back in two minutes. Stay with us.